to do a video on my Bible from one of my subscribers named Gail. Um, so here it is. This is the Bible that I'm using currently and I've used this for a good few years now. It's called the Teen Life Application Study Bible and it's in the New Living Translation and by a company called Tyndale. It's an imitation leather and I got it in the pink colour. Okay, so inside my Bible I keep post-it notes with me. I tend to use ones that you can get in paper chase in packs or Sainsbury's Tesco, anywhere like that. And I just keep those beside me at church along with my big Firefax Bible study planner. I do have a video on this if you haven't already seen it I will link it below. Um, I'm going to do a new one on this actually very soon because I have changed it up. So I write down any relevant verses that are happening in church that I want to go back to and look up. So on this page I use a friction pen which just looks like this and it's just a pen that is erasable. When I have read the books I can mark them off and then when the year starts again I can just rub it out and start all over again. So I'm currently reading the New Testament and I'm up to Hebrews and then this Bible's got a user's guide what you can expect from this Bible, an explanation of all of the features that are inside of it. So it does like little things down the bottom so it's got different sections, maps, all different kinds of things going on. We'll get them in a minute. And this just tells you all about what's going on. This is a look at the book. So it tells you all about the Bible, kind of goes through important things that happen um, in each book. A help for new believers section. Um, so if you are new to learning about God, this page could be really useful for you. These are encounters with God. Um, I've never really looked at this page, to be honest with you, but it just tells you sort of things to do. Write a journal, commit yourself to spending five minutes a day reading the Bible, commit yourself to three minutes in prayer every day. It's just little ideas that you can um, do just to develop your Christianity. This is an introduction to the New Living Translation and then the Bible starts. So at the beginning of each of the Bible books you get this page and it sort of tells you key points that happen in the book. It tells you the purpose of the book, the author, the original audience, the date that it was written, the setting and the key people and I find this really useful just this little section here and I always make sure to read that before I start the book. It just kind of puts a context in your mind of when the book was set and who who it was written for and then this is just kind of a timeline that goes on down the page. You tend to get a map as well when you turn over the page and this just sort of sets the scene of where this book was happening and gives you key places. It's got kind of issues, these are more for teenagers and I don't really tend to read these but it's kind of things that teenagers can relate to their lives and little personality profiles on people in the Bible, so this one's on Adam and Eve. It adds real people's stories into it as well. It's really kind of good all around for teenagers. I'm starting to think now that I might want a women's Bible, especially as this one is dropping a bit, but I just love this Bible so much I can't part with it yet. But if I do find any good women's Bibles, I will probably make that purchase. Especially now that I'm married as well, because I start to think that I need to start looking into um, women and marriage more than teenage life. So I just go down, this is with my friction pen as well, and I just highlight things and write little notes as I'm going. These might be notes that I've heard of when I'm in church that the pastor might say, or it could be if I'm watching a God TV episode, I might hear something that one of the speakers on there talks about, and I'll just add it into my Bible as a little note if it's useful. You know, I just write down little questions, little notes as I go. And then it's always handy when, when you're reading it again, you can go back and be like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. But other things that I do in the Bible, I highlight um, little page flags as well if I want to remember anything. I also use post-it notes. This one was when I was doing a study on Jesus coming back. So I've got Jesus will return as he left, which it says in Acts. 
The amount of olives will be split in two, causing a huge earthquake like none before, causing the whole world to change around. That in Zechariah. And people will come from all over to visit the mountain of the Lord, which is in Micah. So I kind of did a study on Jesus' return, but I noticed it was in three different books. And it's also in Isaiah here. So I've just put the links beside it. And I just kind of just go through and highlight anything that I feel is relevant to me at the time or useful, which is why I'm starting to think now that I might need a Bible upgrade purely because this one, although I love it, a lot of the things that were relevant back when I was younger aren't as relevant now. The yellow in, in the book of Matthew was whatever Jesus said, so I highlighted everything that Jesus said and then I underlined anything that was really important to me. Then I'll just show you in the back of the Bible as well. So after Revelation, it tells you all of the life choices. So if you want to know about abortion, addiction, advice, anger, attitudes, authority, approval, you know, it just goes through alcohol, blame, blessings, change, character. It goes through all different things that you could be um, wondering about and it just takes you to certain Bible verses. Then it's got personality profiles, so if you're particularly interested in anyone, so say I was interested in Ruth, I would just look down here for Ruth and Naomi and it tells me, go to page 294 and it tells you which book of the Bible they're in. Then it's got all of the maps. So sometimes you might be reading something and you think, oh, I really want to see where Ephesus is. So you go down, you find Ephesus. It says Ephesus, locations of, it's in Ephesians 2, page 1292. So I would just flip to that. And there I've got the map, which shows me exactly where Ephesus is. It's right there, over the sea from Athens. So yeah, these maps are really useful as well. And then it's got a section called where to find it and it's got all of the stories and makes it so much easier. So if I hear someone talking about a story that I've never heard of, so let's have a look down. Um, say the golden calf and I'm like, what is this golden calf that people are talking about? I can just go down here and I'm like, oh look, it's in Exodus and I can go straight to that section and read up about it. So it's really handy to have that in the back. And then right at the back is some maps, different maps. So you've got a map of the world of the patriarchs. Then you've got the exodus from Egypt. It's got little um, diagrams of how where they walked. A map of the United Kingdom, not the one that I live in, but of the kingdoms of Saul, David and Solomon. Then you've got the divided kingdom. Assyrian and Babylonian empires, the Greek empire, the Roman division of Palestine and then just a great big one of the ministry of Jesus which is a big one like this and the final one is Paul's journey to Rome and all his missionary journeys and then you're at the end of the Bible. So I hope this has been useful. If you're looking for a good teenage Bible this one is fantastic. It also comes in black. I just got the pink because I like pink best and um, but it does come in black I know that and yeah I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next video thanks for watching bye